All right, guys, welcome back to Just Car Rob. And we're drawing the face on. Getting the eyeballs all ready to be carved in. We're getting the nose set up there. We're using a two and a half inch OCC carving knife to uh, set the nose. It's kind of hard to do with a Dremel with these little faces like this. Uh, it's hard to find a bit small enough to create those cuts. I could probably use the SEM high speed air tool to accomplish it. Um, but I was too lazy to go out and turn on the air compressor. You know how that is. You get, you're in the carving groove and you're like, oh man, I got to walk over there a hundred feet to turn on that air compressor. Ah. When I got a perfectly good carving knife right here in my hand, so that's what I'm going to use. So, we're, so you can see we're setting up for the, the face here. We're getting the eyes dug in, the eye sockets all dug in there. And we're running at about two times normal speed here to cut the video length down, or the video time down. Doing a little fancy knife fiddling there. Getting that hat cut back. The wood does not like to be cut in the uh, upswept matter manner. So uh, we have to go down. And trying to figure out every which way we can to do that without peeling off, uh, split, going, like Jordy said, climbing up the stairs. Problem is, when you climb up the stairs with a carving knife, it just digs deeper right into uh, your carving. So that's no good. So you got to go the way the uh, the direction the wood is dictating. I think uh, these little guys are uh, a little bit harder than you might think because trying to get your tools in places can be difficult to get it uh, carved out the way you like it. So we're just going to fiddle around with this face and this knife here for a little bit. We're going to noodle around like Ben over there at Studio on the Lake says. Hey, Jordy, how do you like them ears, buddy? Look at the size of them ears on there. I should have gave him a bigger nose to match his ears, right? Now, uh, on these little guys, carving the eyes in is hard for me. It's hard for me. And there we are with the micro carver. With a small diamond flame burr. Uh, you just have no room. Especially when you start putting hats on them and stuff. You run out of room to get your knife or whatever in there to carve them eyes out. So, uh, but I did put real eyes in them. But if you want to, you can always just paint them in. On these little guys. Much, much more easier to uh, just paint the eyes in. You take that little diamond burr, that little... That little uh, flame burr like that. And you just sink it in there. It gives you the perfect eye wells. To uh, just paint eyes in. But. I went ahead and uh, carved them in there. And it, it was another beautiful day. A little bit warm. You might want to say it was sultry outside today. Sultry. A little bit hot. A little bit sticky. A little bit sultry. Yep. Uh, you old shop inspector. It was so hot. She's hiding underneath the deck all day. We had a nice breeze though. Kind of blowing. It wasn't. It was uh, just one of those sultry days. You know. It's getting to be summertime in Michigan. And man are we being attacked by gypsy moths this year. You can't sit outside without having them pooing all over you. You're like, man, I think it's raining. And then you look down and you see all these little black specks on your arm. You're like, ah, gypsy moth poo. Boo! Boo on the gypsy moths. The trees destroying little blank, the blank, blank, blanks they are. So we're just doing some smoothing out here. And making it smooth and smooth. With that little diamond burr. Now we're cutting snostrils in with the diamond burr. Yep. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Ah, 
A gazoontite there, Mr. Gnome. Too much sawdust in the air for you? I do believe so. Okay, so now we're drawing the eyeballs in. I, I don't think I'm going to put you guys through the pain of me trying to carve an eyeball. I think we'll change it up and uh, we'll just leap leapfrog right over that. Okay, so what I did is I put a, a strip burr in there. It's very tiny. Start cutting the eyes. And I had to go inside. It got dark. It was about 9.30 at night. So it got dark. And uh, I thought I heard a hel some helicopters flying over, but it wasn't. It was just a squadron of mosquitoes coming to drain me dry. So I ran into the uh, shop there and uh, turned on the fan and closed the door. Keep the bugs out. Man, once the sun goes down around here, I see more bugs, moths, and uh, mosquitoes, and all kinds of weird bugs flying around. And we got them no see -ums, you know, them, them little gnats. And then we're shaving the belly down. We're using a two and a half inch OCC knife. Speaking of knives, it ticks me off. I went online. I, I went to like five or six different knife companies. Okay, so you can see we drilled a hole in this hand. That's where we're going to put the flower. I went to five or six different knife companies. I went to uh, Murray. I went to uh, uh, Helvey. You know, I want to kind of up. I want to up my game a little bit. I want all these all these uh, really good carvers have got these uh, healthy knives. Good luck. Good luck getting a healthy knife. And what's that other one? Uh, Bud Murray. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, there, there's a lot of good knives out there. A lot of good knife companies. Uh, but you know. I just can't believe they're that far behind on on carving knife order. So, yep, I went and did it. I made myself two new carving knives, okay? Uh, I've been watching this new channel. Uh, what is it? Alaskan Woodchuck. Okay? And the guy's bragging up these uh, upswept knives, okay? As you can see here, I, I mostly use a straight blade. And an upswept knife is kind of like your uh, pocket knife or a hunting knife. On the end, it sweeps up. And I've been watching him, and he's been using these upsweep, upswept knives and uh, yapping about how great they are. So, uh, and I couldn't buy one. Can't buy one. They're back ordered, or uh, you got to enter a raffle to win one. To uh, got to win a raffle in order to buy one. Now, is that ridiculous? Uh, so. I, I had some uh, metal laying around here. It's knife metal. 5160 uh, steel. It makes really good hunting knives. So I'm like, well, let's see how good of a knife it makes for a uh, carving knife. So I beat one up, and I had a couple of little metal ferrules. They're like a metal cap laying around. And a piece of walnut laying around. So I made myself a carving knife. I uh, made the handle way too short, though, with an upsweep. And you know what? That crazy Alaskan woodchuck is right. I'm really digging that knife. And man, does it hold an edge. Could it be? Could we be seeing the Just Carve Rob Carving Knife Company come up? No, 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 no. I don't want to do it for a living. Um, I make all. I made all my own hunting knives. I make my own fishing fillet knives and all that stuff. And uh, only because it's hard to find a good quality knife anymore. You know, without spending a bazillion dollars that I don't have. So I went down to the steel, the steel distributor, and I bought some fifty-one sixty and uh, some other W W two, W four, different types of. Uh, steel for making knives and I built myself a tor a forge out of an old steel truck rim uh, I found actually I found a regular blower uh, a guy had a yard sale I bought for five bucks uh, for a forge so yep I built my own charcoal forge and then I bought a uh, 
where was I? Harbor Freight had those uh, leaf burners, grass burners, whatever you're going to call them. So I bought one of them and I made myself a propane forge. It's real cheap to make a propane forge. I think I paid like 20 bucks for the uh, weed burner. And then I paid uh, another $25 for fire bricks over there at Tractor Supply. And I had steel laying around. I built the top for the, the torch to go in. So it's all good. Yep, I don't use it that much. But uh, it works pretty good when you're pounding steel anyway. If you got to heat up, heat, heat something up, it also works good for that. Like if you're going to put a bearing, you got to heat up the shaft for a bearing. Works real good for that on a fan motor. Yep, yep. So that's uh, that's a whole nother a whole nother channel, a whole nother YouTube channel that I don't plan on creating because I believe there is uh, plenty of people out there doing that. There's, and nowadays, there's getting to be plenty of people on YouTube doing wood carving, too. So, um, yep. Gene Messer, the godfather of uh, flat planes carving. Go check out Gene Messer. Messer. Check out uh, Doug Lanker. He's given me a lot of ideas for these little gnome guys. I take a little bit of Doug and a little bit of Just Carve Rob and I squash them together with a carving knife and this is the crazy kind of stuff that comes out. Jordy over at Carving Fusion. Kevin over at Six and Stones Woodworking. Cleves, Cleve Backyard Woodworking. Go see Dave. Uh, I Can Carve. Uh, Ben, Studio on the Lake. Don't forget about Ben at Studio on the Lake. Remember to share, subscribe, and like, guys. Hit that like button. I'll leave a link below for Cuts All. And, uh, for Buy Me a Coffee, if you feel so inclined that you want to help out the channel so we can buy some, uh, maybe a new carving knife or a burr. And this is what the guy come out looking like. All right? This is our little gnome with a flower. I didn't show carving a flower, I'm sure you guys can figure out how to carve a, a daffodil or a sunflower, whatever kind of flower that is. Oh no, help! He's seen the hot chicks up on the shelf, and he's afraid. Be very afraid. But he's not naked and afraid. He's not like the TV show. Help me! So that's it for this one, guys. Hope everybody's doing well, and we will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.